Part One of Edwy, a poem in three parts. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Edwy, a poem in three parts by Anne Radcliffe. Part One: The Hazel Tree, a summer song of fairy. Lightly green with springing buds, the hazel twines her fairy bowers in yon dell or hung with woods where the brook its music pours o'er the margin of the stream peeps the yellow marigold and lilies where the waters gleam bend their heads so fair and cold know ye why the elfin band watch beneath the hazel bough tis to guard its magic wand and its blossoms as they blow these gathered at the midday hour to mortal eyes their haunts betray that has the strange enchanting power to call up a prophetic fay be she down among the rills in some wildwood dingle hid or dancing on the moonlight hills she must speed as she is bid or sleep she on the mossy bed under the blossom breathing lime that sheds sweet freshness overhead the freshness of the morning prime or stray she with old thames serene through osier tufts and lofty groves by royal towers or cottage green still must she leave what best she loves leave the thatched cot where finest spreads the turf mid every choicest flower and the far branching chestnut sheds over the wave its greenest shower where silver streaked that polished wave glides by with lingering sweet farewell while stately swans their proud necks lave and seem to feel some fairy spell then marvel not that elfins fair guard the thin wand and hazel bloom since these can all their haunts lay bare by hidden stream or forest gloom near windsor's shades there dwelt a youth who fast was bound in cupid's chain but how to try his lady's truth by mortal means he sought in vain he to a chamber dim withdrew where serpent skin and head of toad hinted of themes he must pursue ere secret would to him be showed it was a chamber magical where light in partial gleams appeared and showed strange shapes upon the wall by his own mystic learning reared thence to the hazel copse he went when the sun was flaming high and there the twining branches rent for then no fay was watching nigh fast asleep in closed flowers and all unheard and all unseen who that walked these noontide bowers could guess that any elves had been next to the forest hills he hied to pull the wild thyme's budding bloom fresh from some haunted dingle's side for it must blow where fairies come just such a dingle still is seen hanging upon the park's high brow deep buried in the shadowy green where tall or arching beeches grow here oft the fairies revel keep to bless the castle's moonlight hours and peep as winds these branches sweep at windsor diademed with towers grass that crowns a fairy's throne marigolds her canopy lilies for her cradle known these he gathers three and three well prepared with hazel leaves thus the wondrous charm distill which laid on an eye that grieves shows each sprite of grove or rill three hazel wands peel smooth and white just a twelve-month-old no more thrice on each wand the full name right of the fay you would implore then in earth these wands consign in earth that elfin footsteps tread extract them with well-muttered line unheard of man by man unread next to the north your visage turn invoke her name with thrice told three be she by forest mead or born her on your magic glass you'll see with shaking hand he peeled the wand then would he trace her name i wot edwy the love fay would command but edwy had her name forgot full of great flaws to aught but love is the memory of a lover now he must watch where fairies rove or this name he'll ne'er recover 
back o'er the sunny hills he goes to his green home in windsor shades to draw the charm that shall expose the elfin court when daylight fades down by good clewer's winding mead and where the silver currents glide a plume of elms lifts high its head and casts its shadow on the tide all dark and still the feathery grove sleeps in the streamy light below the streamy light with placid love and hushing murmur seems to flow their elves twas said in ringlets went when chimes sang midnight to the land if then on windsor's battlement tiptoe the full orbed moon should stand duly distilled the flowery charm thither edwy must repair and that no check the spell might harm ere the sunset he was there the golden tints of evening lie upon the smoothly flowing stream tint the old walls and turrets high and lower on the wood-tops gleam and slanting o'er the willowed vale the blessed henry's fane enshrined its fretted windows turrets pale and pinnacles far ranged behind and now the soothing hour is come the starlight hour when all is still save the far distant village hum and the lone watch-bark from the hill and wheels which far off travelling pass unseen in bowery lane like to the sea-tide murmuring now loud and lost then loud again he laid the charm upon his eyes and looked with desperate courage round alas no tripping phantoms rise on the shadowy fairy ground patience is a lover's duty here counting every distant chime he exalts his lady's beauty in quaint or pity moving rhyme till in the east a shadowy light rising behind the castle walls gives the dim turrets to his sight and in mute watch his spirit thralls as slow the unseen moon ascends more darkly drawn the towers appear till every doubtful mass expands and lives upon the radiant air then peers she o'er the broad keep's height a spreading curve of light serene and faithful to her loved midnight there reigns its pale and pensive queen and touches with her silver ray terrace and woody steep below the river's willow sheltered bay and waters quivering as they flow where e'er the enchantress points her wand forth from the deep of darkness crowd pale glimmering shapes and silent stand as waked from death's unfolding shroud the landscape lived clear spread the lawn the groves their shadowy tops unfurled and airy hills in prospect dawn like vision of another world the chimes sang midnight edwy shook while by the grove of elm he stood and cast a sly and wistful look around the turf and o'er the flood that wrinkled flood all silver bright no sail of fairy pinnace showed nor neath the still elm's bowery night a glimpse of elfin pageant glowed st george's chimes with falter sweet like infants tried their task to say but waked from midnight's slumber meet the imperfect accents died away and soft they sunk to sleep again ere the slow song was duly closed as seeming feebly to complain of broken rest e'en while they dozed but fairies met not edwy's eye for here alas no more they rove some urchins of the college nigh had surely scared them from the grove such as the forest keepers here have followed helter skelter round hills woods and dales for tracking deer till fond thames bore the whites to ground to eaton ground where safe from law and praising oft the helping tide they peeped well hid in grass and saw the foresters on t'other side such as the maypole oft has watched doff gown and mount the coach on high such as the tavern dinner snatched the bottle drank and ate the pie in fifteen minutes and away and if an oxen heard they met sprung on their horns in laughing play then gravely joined the schoolroom set oh those were happy times i ween the light of morning o'er the sky that touches all the varied scene with lifeful gleams of hope and joy the angered fairies in revenge 
still the tale goes their tyrants flout plunge them in scrapes and mischief strange then leave them to a flogging bout but oft good robin proves their friend and lays his bandage on the eyes of the grave heads who mildly blend remembrance with severe surmise and now in more removed ground up in the high park's ancient shade on the grey forest's lonely bound these fairies dance in secret glade where oaks plantagenet still frown great edward's tree e'en each appears a warlike ruin gaunt and lone the spectre of five hundred years nursed by long centuries gone by reared in the storms that wrecked their kings oh could they give the past a sigh and speak the tale of vanished things the peopled scenes they have beheld in long succession varied guise more wonders here had stood revealed than aught that fairy dream supplies thus edwy with a face of rue returned home for future feet thus he who does adventure woo must sometimes disappointment meet End of part one. Part two of Edwy, a poem in three parts by Anne Radcliffe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part two, the fairy court, a summer's night in Windsor Park. Edwy in his lonely chamber, plying still his magic lore, watched when all was hushed in slumber the dead planetary hour two crystal plains three inches square steeped in the blood of milk-white fowl with careful skill he did prepare gainst next should hoot the midnight owl one would reveal the summoned fay who by her divining art should on the second plane display scenes to grieve or cheer his heart thus endowed to conjure fairy he would fain have conjured sleep but the god of lovers wary hovers not o'er eyes that weep sad and restless all the morning sad and restless all the noon counting every chime of warning through the longest day of june thus he lingered thus he wandered round about his lady's hall till his hopes were nearly foundered till a rival spoke his fall in an aureole he saw her chatting smiling blooming gay doting maddening he bewailed her doubting his first doubts this day breathing lilacs after showers bending with the silver drops greenest leaves and purple flowers waving where the goldfinch hops and scattering round the scented dew and sparkling on the sunny air not half so fresh as aura glow not half so graceful half so fair too soon she vanished from his eyes and evening summoned him afar then to the high-browed park he hies there must he meet the twilight star with magic mirrors hazel wand eyelids touched with clearing spell he sought the court of fairyland hidden in their distant dell through the shaded walks so wide that climb about the southern hill edwy passed with rapid stride nor saw one elf though all was still with toil he gained the airy brow and panting paused to breathe a while and throw a lingering look below o'er the still landscape's parting smile crowning the long vista's shade or topped with turrets terraced high windsor all its pomp displayed beneath the glowing western sky beyond the low blue hills repose along the far horizon's bound how soft the hues the forest throws its leafy darkness shedding round those hills their stretching woods display in faint shade through the azure vale while sweetly bright the setting ray bids many a spire once more farewell and farewell to the banner proud that o'er the broad keep floats on air proclaiming as with trumpet loud its royal lord reposes there pale and more pale the scene retires and windsor's state has vanished now save one dim tower that boldly spires to meet the star on twilight's brow there stood he tranced till in the air warbled music passed along so softly sweet 
so finely clear this was sure a fairy song for now no woodlark waked to sing every little eye was closed on slender foot with drooping wing in its home each bird reposed save one and where he winged his way pleased ed we heard his strain advance on his smooth neck a fairy lay or rather did a fairy dance a veil of gossamer she wore all spangled round with primrose dew a star-beam for a wand she bore which she from venus slyly drew this little bird on circling pinions wantoned over edwy's head then to its shady loved dominions with its fairy lady sped the while his fairy lady trills to the beech woods follow me up the lawns and o'er the hills to the high woods follow me in tiny echoes follow me all the hills and glades prolong from every bush and hollow tree seemed to rise the choral song and edwy round each hollow tree spied the motley elves at play while thick as emmets follow me they sang again and passed away o'er greenest lawns through proudest groves he pursued his feathered guide o'er scenes that silent moonlight loves to the long lake's mossy side the little bird flew o'er the lake edwy round the turf banks went close where the silver currents break and lower oaks their branches bent the stream is there with rocks inlaid he tripped o'er these and reached the road that broad and turfy neath the shade leads to the pleasantest abode green above green of every hue the bordering trees in vista bend shrubs lay their low leaves on the dew and pine and larch on light ascend galleries of verdure all is green here lawn and bending boughs below above tis stately shade the scene seems made for glancing fairy show but closer bowered their noonday haunt rests in a hollow beechen dell its marge no human hand could plant its shadows seem to breathe a spell now would you view the fairies scene where twilight dances print the lawn where it spreads out in softest green to gaps whence distant landscapes dawn high to the western forest gate their claudian beauty melts around their elfin turrets keep their state and tell at once tis fairy ground or at that later evening hour when the turf gladdens with the dew that almost darkens windsor's tower and gives near hills a distant blue and oh if silence could be seen thus would she look so meek so pale the image of this very scene when evening glances on the vale now ed we reached the wood walks wild that open from the watery glade where sweet vale lilies violets mild and primrose tufts the grass inlaid climbing the spiky blades and stems gathering dews were elves a million diamond drops and crystal gems to fringe their fairy queen's pavilion and see what flaming lights appear flashed through the foliage arching high what silver horn winds sweet and clear as breathing from the lips of joy sudden the elves on flower and blade forsake their task and with a bound touch the green turf and down the glade take hands and trip a welcome round but edwy hears no more the strain of his fleeting tiny lady and watches for her bird in vain to lead him through the alleys shady by him an elfin courier speeds on grasshopper his forest ways brushing the humble cowslip heads while each its trembling homage pays and next a winged beetle came sounding deep his herald horn the fairy sovereign to proclaim and evil sprites away to warn there whisked an indian lantern fly quick flashing forth its emerald sheen dancing low and dancing high in many a ring of fiery green then came a creeping stilly breeze that made the crisped waters live that shivered all the sleeping trees and bade the leaves their essence give but see the birds on every bough 
awake and stretch their ruffled wings and o'er the dewy turf below his starry glance the glow-worm flings and the whole wood-bank's flowery couch is sprinkled now with glimmering bands waiting their tiny queen's approach her guards and lights to fairy lands again that horn of joy breathes fine again the moonlight light waters shake where e'er the foaming tips combine rises a fairy of the lake half veiled within the sparkling strife his inexperienced eyes scarce see the pale forms changing into life till all is glowing pageantry true to their sovereigns summons they upon the lake's enchanted shore await her presence proud and gay where rides the fleet to waft her o'er and now a spicy rare perfume such as breathes from indian dells fills all the high wood's leafy dome and the fine fairy presence tells and faint aerial strains are heard as through the rich festooning ways the queen in moonlit pomp appears amongst ten thousand dancing fays by gold and purple butterflies her rose-leaved car was drawn in air above two birds of paradise arched o'er her head their plumage rare while far around her dancing beams that with bright rainbow colors glow strike on the gloom in transient gleams and all her elfin escort show all in the busy air around pert eyes and little wings are seen and voices whisper feathers sound attendant on their elfin queen a robe of silvery snow she wore frosted with magic art so true that the hot breath of midsummer could never change it into dew and wafted by her happy bird a courtier fairy oft proclaims now let the mirthful song be heard our lady queen a welcome claims the little bird too gan to sing and then the fairy tried her voice as gaily as the airs of spring did that poor little bird rejoice the measure changed a languid call sweet with sorrow thrice it sounded concluding in a dying fall softer than air fountain rounded o oh, nightingale it was thy song sent through the woods that dying close i know thee now the note prolong o oh, speak again those tender woes under the boughs the elfin train mutely listened to the measure but when he trilled his joy again they beat the ground in antic pleasure o oh, bird of feeling various sweet thee and thy guardian friend i hail i know thee now and gladly greet the love fay and her nightingale all fly before the elfin queen toward the lake's high crowned head near where the forest oaks begin a reverential gloom to spread with thousand sparks the woodbank swarms her glowworm knights in long array marshalled by firefly king at arms guard her and light her on her way where'er they move the drowsy flowers unclose their leafy curtains far and fays asleep within their bowers leap forth and dance before her car dance to that crystal lake's green side that winds through fur-crowned lawns and woods whose beaches old in giant pride fling their broad shadows on the floods and oft they wanton with the surge that flowing near the fairy court its silver line on line did urge as if to tempt and share their sport as if to woo the elfin queen to float upon its moonlight breast pleased to unfold each margent scene and bear her to her bower of rest the smile that played upon its face she seemed by magic lore to read and with a kind and sportive grace she bade her tiny sailors speed a fleet of pleasure boats lay there such vessels as befit a sprite the water lilies schooners were leaf after leaf outspreading white their skiffs fresh gathered from the lime their acorn barges broad and deep so safe that e'en in tempest time an elf upon his oars might sleep and in his heart of oak could go his tiny dreadnought singing gay spite of the winds and rocks below 
round every fairy cliff and bay sweet wherries of long lavender blossoms of every shape and stain from bluebell yachts to bird pepper attended for the courtier train but their bright queen more proudly sailed in a pearl-shell ship of the line by water mouse ear was she veiled and she was fanned with eglantine her canopy bedropped with gold had floated on an indian tide a lotus leaf with ample fold swelled for her sail in snowy pride the cordage was of silver thread spun of fine bark of ashen tree the mast of sandalwood the head a living dolphin seemed to be her green knights watched upon the shrouds or ranged them far along the prow stood round their queen in radiant crowds or gleamed far on the wave below and others ranked as on a cone stage above stage of towery height moved on the lake around her throne proud floating pyramids of light above them all then might you spy in busy care high o'er the mast their king at arms sir lantern fly ordering the pageant as it passed and glancing down the moonlight air he checked the lily schooner's way and whisking here and whisking there recalled each blossom sail astray then self triumphant in the van in airy circles pleased he danced yet while he led the revel on back for his queen's applauses glanced and thus in gliding state she went o'er the long windings of the wave where many a watchful eye was bent from hollow oak and secret cave the screech owl and the snake were there the boding raven cruel kite that fill the timid heart with care and love to prowl in moonless night but chief on the old forests bound where the still waters sink away such evil agents walk their round or lurk within the oaks so gray bewildered in the wild wood glades edwy oft lost the long lake's side till through some deep groves opening shades he saw the splendid vision glide low glanced the silver oars along quick came the spires of glow-worm light that round their queen's tall galley throng shooting long beams aslant the night these trembling through the branches dome touching each leaf with transient joy now seen now lost from gloom to gloom showed like the stars when clouds fleet by then over banks and under woods edwy pursued the pageant's way till having reached the smiling floods the frolic shores his hopes betray for winding back his course they mar leaving him on some jutting steep mid the lone waters while afar the inmost bay the fairies sweep and thus through wilds and woods he toiled lured by short glimpse of that bright train which through the distant shadows smiled as if in mockery of his pain till once again he heard remote that gentle bird faithful to lovers and following the high warbled note again the fairy fleet discovers just as it touched the farther shore to land the queen those groves among when still was every little oar and every white sail breathless hung no sound was heard but music's voice roused by the motley elfin band who play in moonshine and rejoice in choral welcomes o'er the strand the groves that hovered o'er the brink the polished lake more dark returns and each bright star in emerald twink beneath the wave more keenly burns and there the rival of their beams reflected by the glass below a shooting star sir firefly seems while marshalling the fairy show each shroud and sail of fairy bark each glittering oar and image fair within that mirror blue and dark lay like a picture pencilled fair but when sir firefly's knights moved on and their green torches mutely raised then all the fairies splendor shone and shores and woods and waters blazed thus ranged in vista lines of light moving beneath the leafy gloom where forest oaks spread deepest night they guard her to her sylvan home under an ancient beech that high outhung its spray her dreams of night 
were veiled from every curious eye save when with magic virtue bright its mighty bowels a circle filled like necromantic guard it stood its air severe the wanderer chilled its frown and haughty attitude soon as that beechen shade she reached rustled its every leaf for joy then gracefully her wand she stretched and lighted all its leaves on high yet flame of torch or lamp was none nor any glittering sparkle there it seemed as if the setting sun tinged the rich spray with rosy air her bower through many chambers ranged and each a different purpose showed this oft with mystic shadows changed that for the dance or banquet glowed beyond them all her cell of rest in verdant shade and silence lay save when the ring-dove in her nest sung all her gentle cares away and sleepy leaves scarce moved in air or only swayed by breezes fleet with the lake's murmuring falls afar made melody most sad and sweet lime blossoms strewed the mossy floor and breathed a dewy fragrance round inviting her to slumbers pure while freshness seemed to bless the ground yet here sometimes this queen of dreams would weave such seeming forms of fate as sent upon the still moonbeams oft by the midnight sleeper wait hid in her cool bower might she view the noontide lake and sunny lawns the slow sail on the waters blue and through the brakes the fleeting fawns and watch them on the watery brim bending to sip the dainty wave then starting at the form so slim the shadowed crystal truly gave unseen she traced each step that roved rejoicing on that margent green or sought the hills and groves beloved that crown with pleasant shade the scene edwy had joined the fairy's train just as she reached her leafy dome while full arose the choral strain of welcome to her beechen home her glow-worm knights wide round the beach in glimmering circles take their stand adder nor bird of boding speech nor step unblessed may pass that band in front high on the beechen spray like hesper on the eastern dawn sir firefly spreads his watchful ray o'er dell obscure and distant lawn no shape among the shadows there could glide unseen nor move where frowned that beech's wizard brows in air and shrink not from the mystic ground save edwy with his magic spell invisible and fearless he might pass e'en to the fairy's cell unknown but of one enemy she tripped into her vestibule arched high with rose and eglantine breathing a fragrance light and cool and bright with dewdrops crystalline here many a bell that in the day had hung its fainting head awry now waked for her in beauty gay and breathed for her its perfumed sigh her pavilion next she entered clear the glassy columns shone to the turf steps ed we ventured and beheld her on her throne under an even arch reclining with brilliant drops all thickly hung where mimosa's leaves were twining she listened while the love they sung the thousand dewdrops hanging there and in the swelling dome on high trembled with radiance keen and fair poured from her living diamond's eye splendor and joy around her moved and winning smiles beamed in her face and every virtue most beloved gave to her a tender grace on the ruby pavement stealing circling elves their homage gave then in quaint moresco's reeling they dance and airy garlands wave the silver triangle the lute the tambourine with tiny bells mix with the softly breathing flute the mellow horn more distant swells a quaint and various group arrived one flitting on a bat's wing came no orchard where he haunted thrived malignant elephant was his name one upon a field mouse gliding oft the traveller appalled wondrously his steps misguiding sly elfina she was called a third upon a squirrel springing never rested night or day 
into some droll mischief bringing solemn heads as well as gay on butterfly next sailed a fairy she soothes fine ladies in their vapour who of unchanging good are weary and weep because they've naught to weep for winged by an owl there came an elf who loved to haunt the study table where full of grave important self the wisest head he would disable and make it pro and con and fight on subjects lofty as the steeple or tempt some witling to indite long dreams about the elfin people and now the fairy queen demanded whether her elves the tasks had done that at sunset she had commanded and now she called them one by one she called them but they came not all again the magic horn was wound then thronging sprites obeyed the call but still some truants wild were found yet was this blast so distant heard that elves on windsor's battlement mounted the moonbeams at its word and o'er the long walk gaily went nor stayed upon the tufts to dance of the broad bowery way that swept with utmost pomp beneath their glance though there the yellow moonlight slept though many a bird they loved was hid in silent rest beneath the leaves which if awaked and gently bid would sing the song that care deceives yet had they surely waked them too and danced amorous on the trees had not the horn complaining blew like coming of a tempest breeze but e'en the fairies summons failed yielding a while to beauty's spell when windsor's proudest groves they hailed crowning its wildest deepest dell they paused a moment on that brow under the shading oaks they strayed to spy beneath the branches low the moonlight towers beyond their shade beyond that shade in peace they lay gates turrets battlements aloft just silvered by the distant ray that neath the dark boughs glimmered oft it seemed some vision of the air by magic raised in forest lone that held entranced some lady fair till nodding towers her knight should own the horn again but not like breeze before some gentle summer shower but rushing through the frighted trees e'en with an angry whirlwind's power the moonlight castle sinks and fades beneath the tossing boughs afar and fear the truant elves invades and swift they mount their beamy car no banquet in the bower for them no tripping strains their steps invite the fairy sovereign will condemn their disobedience and their slight hence she cries a vision weave for the couch of that false lover who would a trusting heart deceive hence and o'er his slumber hover dance before him like a shade trace upon his sleeping eye image of that mournful maid whom he won and left to die in my cell of shadows look you will there the semblance see of the damsel he forsook all from idle vanity touch his heart with jealousy shape a dream to rouse despair then to the sad maiden flee and expel her silly care so when the streaky dawn doth wake each shall rise with changed intent each shall the other's fortune take he despair and she content if these dreams ye shadow well return before the lark is up or the chime of matin bell dance the morris sip the cup now farewell scarce had she spoke when all the bower as in a twilight shadow lay the dewy lamp on every flower quivered first then died away her magic diamond warned the queen of step unhallowed passing near it paled its ray to trembling green and shrunk with sympathetic fear then hastily the queen exclaimed some mortal footsteps pressed the ground for edwy when the elves she named had nearer drawn to catch the sound just then the little nightingale in pity of the lover's pain sung from mimosa's shadowy veil his softest sweetest saddest tale which well he knew his queen would win from aught ungracious or severe with charmed attentive brow serene she smiled and dashing off a tear on ada called the love fay thrice some tale of mortal truth to tell her name did edwy's heart rejoice 
for that fay's name completes his spell then straight the bower began to show returning light and through each bud from faintness freed to living glow circled the bright transparent blood now what of chastisement befell this vagrant swain for his intrusion village tradition does not tell or tells with most profound confusion but this most gossips do relate that though he was not held in durance he gained no knowledge of his fate and nothing got by his assurance unless it be that he did see what seldom had been seen before a fairy court in starlight sport with pleasure squadrons and on shore but haply on some other day we may learn more of his manoeuvres and then we shall not fail to say what came of aura and her lovers End of part two. Part three of Edwy, a poem in three parts by Anne Radcliffe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part three The Magic Mirrors, A Summer Night in Windsor Forest. Edwy forsook the fairy court, and to forest glades withdrew, where never yet had elfin sport cheered the melancholy view. Upon the hazel wands he writes Ada's name with thrice and three then buries them with bidden rites underneath a forest tree it was an oak whose trunk within a foul and watching spirit lay whose night shrieks in the tempest din filled the traveller with dismay it was an oak whose sinewy boughs threw a dark horror o'er the ground whose high gaunt top and warrior brows with the storms of ages round its trunk was never touched with light so wide and deep the branching shade of leaves that on a starry night a gleam like break of morning shed but the brook stealing from the break showed a glimpse of brighter ray when on its dewy banks did take will o' the wisp his mystic way round the high roots our ed we drew with muttered charm a magic line and in the circle's heart's ease threw and bryony and eglantine then sweets and poisons three and three jasmine blossoms violet bud the deadly nightshade's tresses grey and the pale monk's gloomy head next the buried wands he raised and ada 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 called thrice upon the west he gazed when hark a shriek his breast appalled it was the spirit of the oak who startled by the love fay's name his dark and secret home forsook he fled in haste whene'er she came a tongue from windsor's distant tower told twelve along the silent wood when lo the planet of the hour quivered upon the trembling flood cheered by the monitory sight then edwy forth his mirrors drew and by that star's informing light upheld them to his searching view again he called on ada's name mildly and meekly to appear and round the crystals rolled a flame while unknown murmurs met his ear see o'er the mirrors mists arise and strange and fearful shadows throng frowning faces glaring eyes look and threat and glance along these gone a tiny form there bounds flitting along the magic glass which in an instant her surrounds with leaves of love in idleness she seems reclining in a bower as the green leaves around her spread the motley yellow purple flower bends in a topknot o'er her head as round this cage of wreaths she hies forth from her wand a lustre pale dawns o'er her blue and frolic eyes and silvers all her dewy veil touches the rose upon her cheek the dimple that her quaint lip owns the smile that now begins to break through clouds of wild capricious frowns while edwy gazed a little strain of sweet complaint did feebly swell when hovering round her leafy chain behold her faithful nightingale he perched upon the true knot there and tried to break with slender bill her prison wreath so flowery fair but the leaves mocked his puny skill 
too late she owns the forceful spell the little purple blossom throws fixed as a painting she must tell mildly and meekly all she knows fairy ada show to me aura as she's now employed on the other glass you'll see with pretty lisp the fay replied he looked the colors faintly dawn and living forms begin to glow aura full dressed in lace and lawn blooms in a ballroom with a bow and dancing with a grace's air and with the eyes of venus smiling ed we beheld her with despair his hated rival's heart beguiling to adams he had almost dashed the mirror and so lost the spell but warning lights around him flashed checked his hand and all was well who is this fop so light and vain quickly the magic scene is changed to rivers woods a wide domain with falconers on the banks ranged all at their head his rival pranced in velvet cap with feathers gay and proudly o'er the sward advanced while men and steeds their lord obey oh tell me ada loves she him can she her promise old forget a flame curled round the mirror's rim the crystal darkened into jet and in long moonlight prospect rose windsor terrace flanked with towers how soft the lights and shades repose among the low park's lawns and bowers oh what an arch the heavens throw upon the vast horizon round the stars how numberless they glow down to the landscape's dim scene bound some battlements are left in night others almost appear to shine of yonder tower whose stately height draws on the sky a tall black line that measures on the azure void billions of miles while worlds unknown distant howe'er glow side by side upon its shadowy profile shone down on the terrace men appear gliding along the stately wall with arms enfolding the tall spear how still their measured footsteps fall voices are heard round that vast shade although no talkers meet the sight but beyond where moonbeams spread figures steal upon the light twas aura with a lady friend twas aura with this lover new ah does she to his suit attend the distance baffled edwy's view ada ada why torment me with obscure ambiguous truth thou to show my fate wast sent me say will she wed this fopling youth behold the terrace fades away and a tapestried room succeeds her sire with age and wisdom gray mid lawyer settlements and deed again the charmed picture changed a gothic porch with silk all hung their bows and ladies fair are ranged while humbler gazers round them throng there a happy rival waited with his friends in trim array aura what makes thee belated aura why this long delay again the mirrors were in danger from our thoughtless edwy's rage but a fairy checked his anger would she might his grief assuage next dimly on the crystal steals a chamber in her father's home there aura weeping pleads and kneels the father frowning quits the room again the changeful glass receives the porch and edwy doth he tremble as smiling aura there he sees and whom doth the bridegroom resemble it is himself he's joyous frantic as the glass showed his happy shape but as he sprung with gesture antic it fell and let the fairy scape without due homage let her fly straight unknown voices from the ground wildly exclaimed o oh, fie 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 and fie 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 the echoes sound unhomaged he had let her fly from the old oak an owlet hooted and thence a louder fie 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 to the spot poor edwy rooted but soon recovered through the woods hopeful and light away he sprung the moon peeped through their leafy hoods and o'er the path her checkers flung to the forest's edge he hied where the beech's giant form had for age on age defied with his lion fangs the storm where the lime with spotted bark spots that old moss on silver weaves 
hung her spray on branches dark among the light transparent leaves and fragrant blossoms forming bowers that cast at noon a twilight green where twas most sweet to watch the hours change the highly tinctured scene the silvery aspen quivered nigh the spiry pine in darkness rose the ash all airy grace on high waved her lightly feathered boughs and there the mighty chestnut reared his massy verdure deepening night whose pale flowers through the dark appeared like gleams of april's coldest light under the low boughs ed we went shade after shade in close array a sadder tint to midnight lent and thoughtless ed we lost his way now far beyond the long-drawn gloom where a faint misty moonlight fell he watched a lonely figure roam and loud he made the echoes swell his call was heard the stranger turned and paused a moment but in vain our edwy would his way have learned for not a word in answer came the vision fled but soon a cry loud though far off alarmed his ear and a footstep passed him by which he followed fast and near till a groan of sad affright almost killed him with dismay and to his undoubting sight there a man expiring lay as horror fixed a while he stood a cloud or spread its darkening veil it suited well his fearful mood it hid that dreadful visage pale now mark where yonder high ohms crowd what red lights gleam and pass along what funeral torches dirges loud a bier and mourners rounded throng down th avenues of pines they go all sad and chanting their despair then wind they on in pomp of woe then fade and vanish into air for yonder o'er the eastern hill morning's crystal tint is seen edging the darkness solemn still and glimmering o'er the sleeping scene o oh, best of light o oh, light of soul o oh, blessed dawn to thee we owe the humbled thought our mind's best dole the bliss of praise devotion's glow o oh, blessed dawn more sweet to me thy gradual hues thy influence fine o'er flying darkness than the ray and glorious pomp that doth enshrine the cope of heaven when the sun comes laughing from the joyous east and bids the expressive shadows run to tell his coming to the west at thy first tint the happy lark awakes and trills his note of joy and feebler warbling murmurs hark break from the woodlands rise and die at thy first tint o oh blessed light the observant elves and spectres fled and that misguiding watching sprite home to her oaken dungeon sped elfena then the mischief fay who with an urchin had combined to wilder edwy thus astray now in a monk's hood is confined no dying man was there no moan there were no red lights near the elms no funeral torches dirges moan no sable band whom grief o'erwhelms still doubtful of his homeward way our hero watched the rise of dawn over a beech tree's airy spray that trembles on the park's high lawn and soon the glorious sun was spied and windsor in her pomp of groves rose up in battlemented pride queen of the vale that old thames loves from where the far-seen western hill in smiling slumber seems to lie upon the azure vault so still as listening heaven's harmony to where beneath the eastern ray with swelling dome and spires aloft vast london's lengthened city lay all miniatured distinct and soft to where upon the northern edge learned harrow points her vein and stanmore lifts its heathy ridge sloping to the cultured plain which purpled with the morning's glow to boundless tints of azure fades while humbler spires and hamlets show their sunlights o'er the woody shades and gleaming thames along the vale midst willowy meads his waters led while here and there a feeble sail was to the scarce felt breeze outspread the willowy meads and lawns rejoice and every heath and warbling wood 
the fragrant air with whispering voice the golden clouds the brightened flood all laugh and sing beneath the morn the dancing lamb the springing deer the wild bee with his humming horn and loud and long sir chanticleer soon as his joyous clarion calls answering notes strike up and swell from rafter dark and loopholed walls where sleep and silence seemed to dwell surprising with their clamour clear the passing herdsman and his hound thus far and near sir chanticleer rouses up all the country round edwy so roused who long had stood over this scene of morning beauty forgetting every other good and lost to each forgotten duty now bounding lightly down the hills and through the high o'erarching groves hide to his home where ada wills he soon shall wed the nymph he loves and grateful for the boon she grants he now resolves that never more his spell shall shock her quiet haunts and quite abjures the magic lore but never let impatient wight when he presumes to woo a fairy destroy his glass or rouse her spite but civil be and very wary thus all was well as watchmen tell of fairy sports in windsor glades save that too long a summer song once lingered in those witching shades end of part three end of edwy a poem in three parts by anne radcliffe